So today, we're going to test DaVinci Resolve 17.3 on my Mac M1 and see how it runs against my specced up iMac 2020. Has the new update made the Mac M1 even better for editors? Let's find out together. Hello everybody, my name is Guy Pigden. I am the Savage Filmmaker. I make feature films, web series and shorts and I'm here to give tips and advice to indie filmmakers about how to make those things. This is what you might call a very impromptu episode because out of the blue, Blackmagic have just announced a new update for DaVinci Resolve, version 17.3. So what? They're creating updates for Resolve all the time. True. But this statement really caught my eye. This software update adds a new processing engine for improved performance on Apple Mac models with the M1 chip. I purchased the 13 inch top spec 16 gig MacBook Pro M1 when it was released. And I've already reviewed the Mac M1 for editing long form projects. You can see the full review here. For truly professional editing projects, there were several reasons that the M1 didn't quite live up to the hype. So I brought an iMac 2020 as my main editing workstation to replace the M1. I stuck with the 8-core Intel i7 processor, but upgraded the graphics card to the Radeon Pro 5700 XT and beefed up the RAM to 64 gig. With this new Resolve upgrade, I thought I would revisit the Mac M1 I'll be screen recording the results and I have the camera set up to track those. So I'm recording myself, I'm recording the screen and I'm also screen recording. So this is iMac 2020 versus Mac M1 in DaVinci Resolve 17.3. Let's go. Okay, so we're gonna do our first test here with the iMac and this first clip is uh, a little beach sequence here that I put together when I was doing tests with the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro. So this is 6K Pro footage at uh, 12 to 1 B raw com um, compression. Um, so you can see my timeline resolution is 3840 by 2160. So I'm just using the Rec 709 um, uh, film to video LUT here um, with very little tweaking. Um, and as you can see, even in this resolution, we get um, pretty smooth playback um, almost all the time it's absolutely fine so we can see playback is great and now I'm just going to export this cool and I'm going to export it as h264 six time at uh, UHD 4k and that's the export settings that I'm going to use um, for all of these tests so if we have a look here at the frame rate um, it's going at about double speed okay so that took 53 seconds, uh, 53 seconds to be completed, and that is for a one minute 57 clip. So now we're gonna take you through these tests on the Mac M1, and we're just gonna have a little look here. You can see from my other setup, I've got my um, M1 plugged into my external monitor here. It's all rigged up to my RAID hard drive, so we'll be getting all the same footage at exactly the same speed as the iMac was. And we can see that we're on version 17.3. And uh, about this Mac, uh, we can see that we've got the um, M1 here, M1 16 gig. And if we just check timeline playback, so this is again um, 12 to 1 B-RAW shot on the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro. So all looking very smooth, super smooth here. Um, and we just look, it does say that it's like dropping half a frame when you start playing it. So maybe just a tiny little bit of lag there, but overall 100% responsive. So that's fantastic there. That's all looking super smooth. Um, but now let's just have a little look if we change our timeline settings. So currently we're set to the timeline playback at 1080, but what if we bump it up to uh, Ultra HD? And now let's have a play. So immediately we've run into some problems, okay? 
playback is not at all smooth um, at Ultra HD and this is the first test with the sort of the footage that has only got the LUT put on it so um, only the LUT put on and you can see it's actually very laggy it says it's playing back at 24 frames um, but it is definitely not it is really struggling at, ten, uh, at um, to play back at normal speed so it seems to me that um, right off the bat um, playing things in a UHD timeline is off the menu on the Mac M1 and this whole three times faster thing uh, well I'm not really seeing that but let's do an export and see how that goes okay and our render time here it is rendering out much slower so again not really sure what's going on but this is not rendering out super fast I would say right so it looks like we've just come to a stop here at 4 minutes and 17 seconds that is for a um, clip or a series of clips that is 1 minute and 57 seconds so it's taken us just over twice the length of the clip to export it out um, and that is much slower than the iMac at 53 seconds um, but let's continue with these tests so this is test number two on the iMac and this time we've got this little night sequence that I put together now this sequence is a little more tricky than the um, beach sequence so we've got uh, the LUT applied a few extra tweaks and denoising and some stabilization of some shots so if we just play through the timeline here so you can see it's actually playing back pretty well for the most part and we're now just going to up this to our ultra hd and we're going to save it and now we're going to try playing back and we start to get a bit of choppy playback here and just playing again again we see we're dropping some frames and it's no longer super smooth and you can see now that this is being exported out much slower so we are getting uh, six or seven frames per second on the iMac uh, it's bumped up now so it is speeding up now um, but it looks like we're exporting at about half the speed of the actual video clip on the iMac it has taken us 3 minutes and 41 seconds due to the amount of denoising that DaVinci Resolve had to do on the export um, so let's move on to our next one okay test number two with the Mac M1 so we can see here um, with the noise reduction we're getting playback at about 12.5 frames um, but it is definitely struggling if you've got your um, noise reduction turned on in the grade uh, as I do um, you can see that uh, yeah it's it's not looking good um, UHD and see how we go oh so now it's just started loading and Okay, I press play, it's not even playing. So if we're looking at this render on my timeline, um, on my video here, we can see it's rendering at uh, one to two frames. So we finished our night shoot export and it was completed in 20 minutes and 17 seconds compared to the iMac at three minutes and 41 seconds. So again, um, another fail for the MacBook M1 in terms of really competing or in fact being very viable. Remember that this was a one minute and 35 clip that just happened to have a lot of noise reduction and a fair amount of stabilization as well. Anyway, on to the next test. No, no more fucking tests, okay? The tests all wind up the same. We don't need to see any more of these fucking tests. 
Do you know what insanity is, past guy? Um, Doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. That's what you're doing. Okay. Yes, past guy. We get it, okay? You're very thorough. You're very meticulous. Do you want a medal? Can you form a single sentence without an um or an ah? Uh? Uh. It's so annoying. I just want to punch you in your stupid good-looking face. Um. Da, 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 da. No. Okay? Just no. Can you not for just one second? The biggest test for the no. Mac M1. No tests. Let me, future editing guy, summarize all the rest of the tests so we can wrap this up and everyone can get the f*** out of here. Okay? Okay. Good. <sighs> Past guy ran three more exports on both machines. Some clips from my Lord of the Rings skit, which had some heavy color grading, the full Star Wars parody I recently uploaded to my channel, and an export of some 12K footage downloaded from Blackmagic's website. The first two exports were B-RAW 12 to 1 6K footage filmed on the Pocket 6K Pro, and the final export was 12K B-RAW footage from the Ursa 12K. The results were all very similar. The iMac could play most things smoothly in a UHD timeline, and almost everything smoothly in a 1080 timeline. The Mac M1 could never play anything smoothly in the UHD timeline, and any time denoising or heavy grading was involved, it struggled to play back even in a 1080 timeline. When exporting the M1 surprisingly did the best when exporting the Star Wars parody, which had a LUT applied, some minor tweaks for the grade, and a lot of visual effects, which was the best example of a complete editing project. It should be noted there was no denoising in this video. However, in all three instances, the M1's export times were miles behind the iMac. In most cases, the iMac was between four and six times faster than the M1. Past Guy was so frustrated by these poor results from the M1 that he downloaded DaVinci Resolve version 17.2 and reloaded it onto his M1 Mac and ran all the exports again to see if there was a noticeable performance improvement between the two versions. While timeline playback seemed very similar, there was some improvements to most export times, especially in the 12K timeline export. However, the night shoot denoise export was actually slower in Resolve 17.3 for some reason. None of the exports were three or even two times quicker in the new version of Resolve, more like between 10 and 20% quicker. <sighs> there, done, okay? I'll let past guy move on to his final thought. After that day, I need a beer. Clearly, I'm very disappointed. When Blackmagic Designs state that M1 machines would run up to three times faster in Resolve 17.3, they should have put a big emphasis on up to. Using Blackmagic Design's own proprietary B-RAW codec optimized specifically for editing in DaVinci Resolve, there is very little improvement with this new upgrade to the M1's performance. As far as my tests show, if you're a Blackmagic shooter filming in B-RAW on an M1 Mac, you will get none of the claimed benefits from this Resolve 17.3 update. The Intel iMac 2020 absolutely smoked the Mac M1 in every export and timeline test. And while I entirely agree that it's not a fair fight, I expected there to be at least slightly more competition with this new update. This experiment has only reinforced my opinion on the Mac M1 for editing. It's a great machine that provides excellent value for money, but real editing with high resolution footage and grading requires something more powerful and you shouldn't be looking at this computer as your magic bullet solution, at least not when using B-RAW. Of course, there could be something I'm missing, and there's many more tests with different codecs that may display some of these speed improvements that Blackmagic have advertised. But at least for B-RAW shooters like myself, it seems clear to me you need to look at a better computer for your professional editing work, if you use DaVinci Resolve. I hope you found this video helpful. 
If so, consider giving it a like and subscribing, or checking out my feature films available free on Tubi TV and Amazon. Links in the description. As always, I am the Savage Filmmaker, and I'll see you when I see you.